welcome back to the shop. Your gun's a car. <laughs> Never fails. There was nothing here for the longest time. Figured I'll shoot the opening. Uh, I was given this for the holiday. Instamorph. Great stuff. Moldable plastic. And they have instructions on the back. You heat the water 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Pour this in there. Wait. Remove. Mold. And create. Nowhere does it tell me how much water to use, and it doesn't say how long to wait. Great product. Thought it'd be interesting to see what it does. All right, this is a quick little one-day uh, project here to solve a problem. How many times have you had something really small, like a gib screw, that you have to put into the grinder to round or do something with a screw or bolt. So you do one of two things. Either you, first thing you do is you grab it with the pliers and you try to run it in there, but inevitably the screw pivots sideways. So you realize that's worthless. And you've done it a million times and you have the same results. Or you do, you grab it with your fingers now, you're stupid enough to grab it, and you put it in there, and one of two things happens. Either somehow it magically grabs in the grinding wheel, flies across the shop, and you spend the next hour looking for it because it's your only one. Or it gets hot and you burn your fingers and you jump up and down. So this is a project, I saw a picture of it on Google, and decided to make one so I hope you guys enjoy the video all right to do this I'm looking at the picture here of this clamp because I kind of like the looks of it and how it's gonna work so I started just drawing it on a piece of metal and it wasn't looking right so I wind up drafting it up first in my uh, Visio program that way I can move lines and things oops, move lines and things around until it starts looking proportional. So I'm looking at this going, ah, okay, so this line here is like on center line with it. These have to be 45s. Um, I did a 60 degree here and it didn't look right, so I'm not sure what angle this is. It's down here. This is 23 degrees so almost because I can change it to 60 here if I hit 30 that's going to be 60 so that's that's pretty sharp so undo that move <laughs> or put it back so now I can draw the lines in here and see what the actual dimensions are and I've already put the die cam on the piece I'm going to use. This is actually to scale because the piece that I think I'm going to use is one and a quarter by a half inch. So I made a box originally that's one and a quarter inches and started doing all the pieces from that. So now I can uh, just kind of take the measurements off of it and scratch it out into the, um, the actual part. Alright, there it is kind of scratched out moved one line I think you can see the double line there where the back of the jaw is um, so it's just a matter of starting to mill it out now alright on my lowest set of parallels three-quarter grizzly end mill just start hogging out majority of this material uh, just kinda get it close to shape and then I can start doing some finishing stuff to it I don't know if you can see that finish that was one. I had two three-quarter grizzly end mill, and that is a terrible finish. So I just switched it out to the other one. Let's see what happens here. <coughs> Big difference. Bad end mill. Great. So I'll fire that one up. Or I'm looking at the DRL. So when I hit zero, one a. Yeah, big difference. Wow. I wonder what happened to that end mill. Yeah, that's a lot better. Good grief. I don't know. It's 
Seems like it's fine. You gotta look at it under a magnifying glass. So that's kind of it here. I cut out all the material here on the other side. For this guy, since I had the mark, I just put a parallel here and eyeballed it and then just take it down. So that's where we're at so far. Now it's just a matter of cutting it off and then I'll come back and fly cut both sides. And that should be... And it's just kind of cleaned up, I guess. Chamfer some edges here. I do have a round here, but when I fly cut this side, that'll go away. Don't know how I'm going to clean this surface up. Probably sandpaper or something, but that's pretty close to being it. It's a pretty quick project. Uh, yeah, this is one trick I like to do. I want to make sure the sides are square with one another, so I'll just put a square in there, hold it, and clamp it. And then you can take this guy and you can see if you can rock it. If you can't rock it, you got to clamp down right. So now I'll just fly cut this, flip it over, do the same thing, fly cut the other side. And I know everything is nice and square with one another. Well, this one was a little bit to think about. In the picture, I, they show the pattern like it was all cut at the same time. So... To do it, I could have had found, I couldn't find anything which was just a block to push it all flat on. This was a piece of three quarter. That face of it was a uh, fly cut in the bottom fly cut. So now I got a parallel at an angle like that, and then one in the back, and everything's pushed on it. And I can feel under there it is flush. So now I can fly cut this whole thing, all the pattern will match the same height, and then I'll flip it over. Do the same thing to the other side. Um, then, okay, that means I've got two sides. Well, I already got that side done. No, no, I'll have two sides done. It'll be the exact same thickness. Then I just need to get the top done and the ends. And then do the angle. And then I've got to figure out how to do this doll pin that goes in there. Well, that setup worked. <laughs> Because it took this down just with this. I mean, it, it was flat. So I was hoping for that, thinking though maybe it's going to be pretty crooked. But a uh, heck of a burr on that side. I'm going to get rid of. I uh, wonder if I should just put the 45 and deburr this whole thing. Well, no, because I don't have the height done yet. Yuck. Oil all over the place. So, chips all over the place, too. <laughs> Onward and upward, flip it over. And there it is so far. Looks like I've got, I can see reflections in the light. I've got some more sanding to do here. But, actually, it looks so nice, you don't want to use it. You're going to scratch it up. So, um, yeah, there's some marks here. But, it's good. there's going to be more marks when I put it back in the vise. So, I want to try to drill that all at the same time and looking at his picture because I was thinking press fitting in here um, looking at his picture he actually has a set screw to hold it uh, wow I just realized that's pretty tight space because I've got to get a knob in there and then I've got to get the guide in there too so may have to take that back further Ooh, if I do that, this moves. All right, I guess I'm going to have to do, because his picture it shows it right on the edge here. So I should have enough of room with this design. And then I can document this guy if anybody wants to build it. But uh, So onward and upward. Oh, and i got to make the handle. So All right, uh, pretty good so far. All right, to cut a V-groove, it's pretty easy <laughs> because the end mill is 90 degrees. You just put your work in there at a 45, and then you go in and down, and you got your V-groove. Very easy to do. And I forgot to mention, it's kind of simple. To keep it equal on both sides, you go down five thousandths over five, down five over five. And you keep matching it until you have the size of a V-groove that you want. 
and there it is I just quit that was 25 thousandths down and 25 thousandths over progress update and hopefully I don't start coughing to death I'm just kidding over the flu came down with it on Xmas day just wanted to share this I forgot how much these were but they were on Amazon put it on my Christmas list these were the worst things I've ever seen <laughs> this it like it which is hacksawed off so uh, bottoms ground the V's ground that's ground it's supposed to be a matched pair I did put it on the granite block put a gauge pin in there and test indicated it was right on the money so um, for what it's worth I'm just gonna keep them well, you can see it's terrible castings <laughs> like wow matched pair but I'll just wind up cleaning them up more and throw it in the drawer this guy is coming along um, uh, what can I say here it was pretty easy just drilling the hole for this um, actually I drilled that out first and press fit it down in there so it's there and I knew this dimension but when I went out and I was just eyeballing it with the drill bit oh, I'm way off camera eyeballing it with the drill bit it looked like it was off but I just said forget it I'm just gonna trust the DRO and it came out right on it uh, same way well no there was no problem drilling this hole and I went with five millimeters rather than a quarter twenty because it looked better and it's also a finer thread so I like that and then you can see I did a relief in there used a little cutter I ain't going around I don't know if you can see it but um, so if you're gonna make this you might want to consider drilling this hole first before um, removing all this material here so I've got what do I have left drill and tap that cut this groove in here and I was thinking how am I going to hold this let me go get the vise now and lo and behold once again here comes the little vise because <laughs> I'm just going to hold it like this and then it goes in the vise and tilts like this at a 45 and I'll use a small end mill and just kind of eyeball where the center is hopefully I can hit it and make it look really good so that's I just got to do the groove and then figure out what I want to do here drill and tap it and then I can do the final sanding and finishing but I'm very pleased with how it's come out so far so that's just a little update probably the next time you see it it'll be the finished product I hope well, there's the finished product, except for a knob here. <laughs> a fun little quick one-day project. Um, kind of looks awkward here with this handle. But when you look at the picture of it um, on Google, where I copied this from, you don't see the handle, and it's probably because it looks so funky. But... Um, what can I say? Uh, the groove inside, I'm uh, not sure. Yeah, you can see it. Um, I was using a 1 8 inch Niagara cutter, found center, and I went out and I'm taking 5 thousandths and I go to come back in and it just lifts it out of the vise. Luckily, there was very little damage done to the tip, so I could fly cut that and get rid of the damage, but. Um, couldn't ask for better tolerances here on this guy it just it's right there so I will go in the drawer uh, right below the grinder in the toolbox let's see how it works out someday I'll probably make this handle thing here um, because I've got problems with knurling it's it's total crap shoot whether I get it or not locked out on this I think it's the wheels that are on the um, knurling tool that I have they're the Harbor Freight ones that came with the quick change tool post and you caliper them and they're different uh, diameters are off by a couple of thousand so I think that's what's throwing it off so eventually the ones that I had bought from that are made in the USA reads 
which are a lot wider. I'll have to redo the um, the knurling tool holder or whatever and put those in there and hopefully I'll have better success, more more repeatability or guaranteed results. I think I'm gonna bevel that more or chamfer it uh, to match this, but it, I think it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. Probably wind up shortening this. I don't think I need it that long. Probably right there. Just cut it there. Because I'm not going to open it up more than that. So there's the project. If anybody wants to copy it, I'll put the print up on the website.